Hi, and welcome to Unmasking the Trans Movement with John Euler. I'm your host, Brad Wilder. Today, John Euler sits down for part two with Uta Hagen on the results of groundbreaking research that Uta has been conducting into the harm sexually deviant, cross-dressing, unfaithful trans husbands cause. There's a lot to unpack. Part one was packed with all kinds of great information. If you haven't seen that yet, we recommend you take a look as well. John and Uta with part two standing by coming up right after this. Exposing Soji123.com provides all the info you'll need to protect your children and family from this transgender ideology. Exposing Soji123.com has done all the work for you to take a stand and be heard. With dozens of letters pre written to every official you can think of within your province, the documents provided are fill in the blank so you can amend and send. It's that simple. Make your voice heard and count for the children to the highest levels of provincial and so-called federal political leaders, health ministers, school board officials, and more. Exposing Soji123.com, where the facts are real. Welcome back to Unmasking the Trans Movement with John Euler. I'm Brad Wilder. Today, John Euler is standing by along with Uta Hagen, They've got lots to discuss on part two. If you missed part one, we recommend you always go back and take a look. Part two, though, discusses more of the results of the groundbreaking research that Uta Hagen has been conducting into the harm that sexually deviant, cross-dressing, unfaithful trans husbands actually cause within the home, within the relationships involved, from children to the wives, and so much more. Let's bring in John and Uta right now. John, Uta, welcome back. Brad, thank you as always. And Uta, welcome back. Thank you so much. You are our resident expert. As a matter of fact, you are in the midst of a research project, a one of a kind. You are the one to do it, meaning you're in a position to do meaningful research. It's never been done before. You're doing a qualitative and a quantitative analysis. Quantitative is that's where you have the numbers. Qualitative, you're also deriving themes because that has to do with interviews of women who have been betrayed by sexually deviant men that begin cross-dressing. So the term now that you all are using is uh, trans widows, but it's really these guys just are sexually deviant and they have broken everybody's heart and broken vows and leaving a, a trail of of pain in their wake. And so you are endeavoring to collect data. You're making a lot of the people that have put false narratives out there that tried to have flipped, have tried to flip the script and invert sympathy so that we feel sorry for these sexually deviant, narcissistic, myopic, uh, self-centered individuals. Mm -hmm. No, we're not going to let them get away with that. And so you are actually, as you are um, you have your site, so I want you to give that uh, where people can get a hold of you if they would like to participate, yes. if, if wives yes. who right, have right. unfaithful deviant husbands that have done this as far as cross-dressing, you know, they're going under the term trans now. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, welcome back, and we'll jump into things. There's so much for us to talk about, even off-camera. Uh, between uh, this segment and the last segment, I encourage people to go back and watch part one of this segment. We started talking about the cost on the healthcare system that yeah. monies, dollars have been diverted mm -hmm. away from legitimate uh, research into cancers. And now these cross sex, wrong sex hormones are giving people cancer. Yes, I think so. Mm -hmm. And yes. so we have yet to see the toll. It's going to come down the pike as right. far as the health implications and repercussions of fooling around with the endocrine system. Yes. Yes. That's right. That's right. All for an ideation. I call it cross-sex ideation, right? And my site is a WordPress blog. It's utahegangrasswidow.wordpress.com. And we'll, we'll my, have a link to it down yeah, below. And my, uh, it's uh, all the information is at my YouTube channel, uh, Trans Widow Uta Hagen on YouTube. And um, <clears throat> uh, uh, I have I have troll policies. <laughs> I don't. I encourage all of the people who watch my uh, 
uh, videos to put in comments and do likes because we we want the algorithm to go up. But I always say, don't interact with someone who uh, is, is telling me, they, they tell me things like, well, you're not doing proper journalism. You're not presenting both sides. And, and I, I, I have decided I'm not going to interact with them. No, that's right. You don't even entertain that. You know, me having done sex offender treatment now for 15 years, that's like someone saying, well, Euler, you're biased. Yeah, yeah I'm biased. Yeah. Yeah, because if I take the word of somebody who's sexually deviant, then I'm a sucker. And I have now warped my yeah. my uh, research. So it, and, and it's the thing is, you know, I you guys to silence yeah, you. Yeah, I'm I'm realizing I I I swallowed for you know a couple of decades, I swallowed my ex-husband's uh statements that he had not been fooling around on me. Now I don't believe that at all. I honestly believe that he was, uh, I'm just lucky, you know, that I didn't get um, some STD, basically. Yeah, and, these, these guys, when a guy becomes sexually deviant, mm-hmm. he becomes an expert in impression management. So he's becoming psychopathic by degree, sexually psychopathic. Yeah. Yeah. And they are first class grade A liars. And yes. that's why to take them at face value, mm-hmm. uh, we are foolish at best. Yeah. Yes. And, and, you know, um, because I know from finding my ex-husband's cross-dressing diaries, which there were three, three big sketchbooks that he, you know, filled only the best paper, right? Only the best pen and the best paper and everything. (laughs) And he described where he was. And he was on 8th Street in, um, in Greenwich Village, which is sort of like one of the uh, gay capitals of the universe. And, and, but you know, like someone like Ray Blanchard, who uh, made up these uh, protocols of cross-dressing 24-7 for two years, which, of course, my ex, when before he went off to Stanford University Medical uh, to have the castration and all of those surgeries, um, he hadn't done the protocols. He hadn't done it. He hadn't told the children not to call him daddy. He didn't do that. He didn't really fully cross dress 24 7 until after the surgeries, <laughs> until after he no longer had his male member. So, so that's just, you know, and, and I mean, then in the divorce, <laughs> which cost me, you know, between 30 and $40,000, and because it was a custody battle, then, then they make a custody battle, which Tracy Shannon, that you've interviewed, um, She's really uh, such a great example um, of a strong woman, you know, moving on and and telling the truth and everything. Uh, you know, uh, she, he, I mean, just, it's just now that I have my data, my 20 questions to ask a trans widow uh, survey from answers from 53 women, um, I, I really look back and, and sort of, you know, saw the red flags in my own life and said, oh, you know, for sure he wasn't faithful. For sure he was, uh, you know, when he came back with all of his his body hair shaved off in 1992, you know, from San Francisco, from a so-called business trip to San Francisco, you know, like he he had to have someone there. He he must have hired, you know, an, an escort or whatever, you know, to to help him with all the shaving. <laughs> right. <laughs> and Uda, this is a good point to you are soliciting in a good way yeah. uh, for research for those women who have uh, awakened to the nightmare yeah right, of uh, finding out their husband not only has been unfaithful but he's in a homosexual lifestyle and now he's doing the deviant cross dressing stuff mm-hmm. that you are making an appeal if they feel so inclined to go on and take your survey right because the more information you gather the more yeah who are willing to participate then the validity and the reliability of your outcome yeah is all the more strong yeah. and that's why it's making everybody right. in academia right. who has been pushing this false narrative that these guys 
they just have a fetish this is they just have they have issues or this is a yeah. disorder no it's not it's all right. sexual deviance and so you are doing one of a kind research and so if a wife who awakens this nightmare and you have a screening process part of that is they have to have left they can't be under the same room uh, same roof or in the same room with the guy uh so yeah. that adds to your validity right of the research. well the, and there's a real um uh, ethical reason that i have to require that they are now in their own space because inevitably uh he is going to go searching on her phone and go searching on her computer uh, and uh, find if she's reaching out to someone like me. And then if he finds that she is not safe. So it's a real safety issue, which speaks yes. to deviance yes. and the danger yeah. underlying these guys. These, these are the same guys that know how to appear mild mannered, but behind the scenes, they are potentially lethal. You look at what Kelly yes. J. Keene has gone through. These these right. guys, because they're deeply steeped in porn, I mean, the issue is deviance. Porn has fast-tracked it. Right. They, you don't know who you're dealing with. This is a Jekyll and Hyde kind right. of individual. And for example, um, there's a killer in Missouri who was executed for, uh, he declared after he was convicted that he's a woman and so on, but he had killed his fiance. And uh, that is the consequence in that state. And uh, I think it was, I, I'm not exactly sure when it was, uh, uh, but uh, about a year ago or so, he was executed. And now that statistic, according to the trans movement, um, is a transsexual who was killed. Okay. Like they added him, they added plus one <laughs> onto their uh, transsexuals who have been killed in the United States in the year 2022 or something like that. He's added to that. He He's a murderer <laughs> and he was executed legally. He had, um, I mean, it takes quite a lot these days, you know, to, uh, there's a lot of appeals and all this kind of stuff. And he said, well, the, uh, you know that I was a different person. <laughs> you know, I'm a I'm this woman now, and you can let me out because I won't kill people. <laughs> so, but uh, but it was apparently a quite heinous crime, and he had maybe other convictions or something prior to that. So, um, but that is now counted in their statistics. So, so Dr. James Cantor, like, don't tell me that I'm going out fishing for dirt. Don't tell me that because my cohort is women who left because uh, women who stay, like, for example, one of my, uh, Ophelia, I think I named her, uh, one of them stayed for 10 years and pretended to be a lesbian with this big, tall bloke who's, you know, built like a linebacker, and, you know, and then she fell in love with a guy and he sued her for divorce based on infidelity. Yeah, and also, I, you you mentioned James Canner. I want to invite him onto this program. At some point in time, I'll personally reach out. He and I have had exchanges. They've been oh. less than ideal because oh, well. he is pro, uh, yes, that's pro right. pedophile in the sense yeah. that he wants to destigmatize pedophilia. He believes that the P, pedophile, should be added to the ever growing alphabet list of the LGBT. I think, I, I will tell you though, I think he's right? he, he starting wants, to reel some of that back in. Yeah. I think he's he's realizing well, because good. then he, he can come on this program said, and yeah. say that because yes. he wants civil rights protection for these guys. And what I'll say is yeah. this. Do not tell me for any of these researchers. Do not tell me that you have done thorough research if your research depends solely upon self-reports of the most deviant of individuals. Right. They are because the world's they most profound liars. And if you yes. cannot track them once they leave your office. Right. If you yeah. cannot, if you don't have access to what they're doing at night behind closed doors, you are being played a fool. And therefore, at face value, yes. your findings, the validity and the reliability is at best suspect because you yeah. don't know if you've been played. And these guys also downplay the dangers of porn. 
Don't oh, yeah. tell me you've done objective research. That's right. If you minimize the effect of porn, because that's the one common denominator among every single sex offender, every single pedophile, and all these deviant guys that betray their wives and start cross-dressing. It is deviants fast-tracked or supercharged right. by porn. These are porn-saturated right. deviant men who betrayed their marital vows. Yeah. And and we're ahead of the crowd, you and I. That that's the thing. The rest of them are playing catch up. Or and, they they uh, they don't want Panther uh they said, don't want to focus on porn because right. of well, their Cantor, own activities on porn. Well I don't know. But but uh Cantor uh said that he he doesn't really know how it was that he got named as a board member or an advisor or something oh, of like Prostasia. Oh, yeah, Prostasia that's right. or Nambla, I have no idea, was, even though he was, oh, yeah, he just, he was writing articles and things, he, he, supporting you know, that. All these, oh, yeah, they I've got you screenshots. A nice letter of, and can you say yes to us and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, yeah. okay, you're... Well, good. You know, then he can come out and he can... Um, he can show right. how yeah. all of this has deviance at its root. And yeah, and, and it was interesting because it was two women who were uh, interviewing him and they just so soft pedaled all yeah. of this. And 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 now the thing is, you know, the <clears throat> uh Cantor, Zucker, Blanchard, uh Bailey, um, I call them the the four musketeers of sex. Um no insult to to the writer <laughs> who wrote the three musketeers, but um, there are so many, uh, red flags that they decided that they couldn't see. Well, they Michael Bailey with- is as deviant as the day is long, right? He, he did that demonstration. Oh, class, that's right. Right. In Northwestern yeah. University. At Northwestern, yeah. Right. It brings, it brings in a, a couple. This is after class. So supposedly extra credit. Well, it's or all something. consensual, blah, blah. Yeah, the, yeah. the F saw, F U C K, right. That, yeah. that, that was the demonstration. A guy and a gal walk into class. The guy has a hacksaw. So Michael right. Bailey oversaw this and the guy inserts a, a dildo on top of the hacksaw, plugs in the hacksaw and inserts it into the woman. And and how is that any different from this woman who who says uh, that she's a trans man named Buck Angel who is like all over the place? He went on Howard Stern and jumped onto a machine similar to that that was like a, a saddle. It was made into a, a saddle, and and um, you know had that you know demonstrated you know bumping up and down on how on Howard Stern I I think it's been taken down now but you mm-hmm. know and and so the thing is um these people are uh are um they're pretend they're just they're they're having a real hard time with with morals and ethics well and, and talk about and researcher they, bias yeah. and that's why they don't researcher like researcher bias exactly they, right they don't you like know. what you are producing because right. in the social sciences psychology being a soft science you know, right Kenner loves to use the phrase the science is settled there's no settled science no. he's got a single snapshot of a brain which my contention is it's identical to what happens with pornography so ah, it takes ah, work it takes work to become right. a pedophile you have to override uh-huh. your conscience all these yeah. guys start with adult victims mm-hmm. um so it's a misnomer to sit there right. and say that minor right. attracted person and, and, that is a know, lie blanchard's uh so a couple of blanchard's quotes are uh um it's too disturbing for the patient to acknowledge that it is a sexual fetish. It's so perfect. that's basically Blanchard acknowledging that it's a sexual fetish. And we need and to stop calling it fetishes. Out. This is deviance. It's, it's just yeah, different ways right. that deviance manifests itself. That's all these fetishes are. So, and uh, hopefully they'll take us up on the offer to come on the program so we can all have discussions with them. Well, let's get back to Uruk. Okay, my As study. Now, okay, let's continue yes. because if you have, again, We'll make an appeal for any yes. wife that was betrayed yeah. by a sexually deviant man. Now he's cross-dressing, calls himself whatever. That you are, you have a a survey that you yes. are collecting data, so we can finally get an understanding, an accurate understanding of who these guys are behind the scenes that they don't let on. The wives are the ones that know, 
And so yeah. you are dispelling myths and you're yes. making a lot of uh, people uncomfortable. It's a beautiful thing so. because you're bringing <laughs> truth to bear, unmasking yeah. this world of deviance. Yes. Well, and I invite any of either of our viewers on on your channel and my channel to, you know, copy and and uh, tag these guys on Twitter. I'm banned for life from Twitter <laughs> because I did that. <laughs> and uh that that was uh so i had a a video about the the four that i know of the four trans widows who who killed themselves or yeah who killed themselves and then there are two more who just didn't have the will to live when they got a bad cancer diagnosis so once they found out that their and, husbands were unfaithful and deviant you yeah and so women that have killed themselves. i i posted a very short video i i did the link you know to this very short video on my three days of life on Twitter, <laughs> uh, on to, you know, Cantor and Zucker and, and Blanchard and stuff. And, uh, and I got banned for hate speech. That's hate speech. That's hate speech. Telling, you know, that these women lost their will to live. So that's right. that's hate speech. yeah. Yeah. And so, <laughs> and that's the thing is, this is what I'm, you know, um, uh, telling women is that my data is telling us that you are in danger of becoming so depressed um, and so assaulted in your psyche that you will you could lose the will to live. And, and, uh, and that's why I want to encourage um, wives who've been betrayed. That's what we're talking about. Wives yes. who've been betrayed by de sexually deviant men who are now dressed in women's underwear. Yeah. Um, I want to encourage them to reach out to you. Tracy Shannon also is doing a support group. Right. Connected There's a Facebook, Trans Widows, yeah, Trans Widows Unite. There is a, a two-word Trans Widows Facebook group, and you have to be vetted to get into it. And uh, then there's the one that Tracy Shannon started, which is called one word, Trans Widows, and then Unite. <laughs> Trans Widows Unite. That's right. So mark. we yeah. want women who have been betrayed. We want them to understand it's not their fault. And right. that it's a process that you'll have to go through the grief and loss process. Right. So Uda, let's I mean, continue. It's the same. Yeah, it's it's the same as, you know, now I'm seeing way too much physical assault. So it's basically, it's domestic abuse. Absolutely. You know? So let's continue. Yeah. And so, what, okay. The reason you're back is you introduced the survey and you've had additional participants. Yes. So you're yes. getting. Now I'm up to, yeah, 53. You're yeah. up to 53 now. Okay, yeah. so continue. Yeah. Let's go through the questions quickly. So, yeah, yes, yes. Was his cross-dressing a revelation or your discovery? 23, revelation, uh, meaning he came to you and said this. Uh, uh, 22, a discovery, so he's keeping it a secret. And then eight was unknown. It was I took uh, that information from a few interviews. There are about eight interviews that I took information from, and the rest are are um you know uh women who who answered my survey questions exactly and the thing is um either way uh if he's started going to a mental health uh person a, a gender therapist so called uh then they are colluding with him to keep it a secret until he decides to reveal it to you right or until you discover, <laughs> like I did. It was a discovery for me. Two, did he tell you it's under control and not so frequent? And then it escalated out of control. 26, which is about half of us, uh, it escalated out of control. And and uh, uh, they will present it as this, I just do this to relax and I'll, I'll just do it behind closed doors and you know, let me have my one night every two weeks or something like this. But then, you know, you discover that he's going out and he's found other guys. And the thing is, now I haven't really taken any data on this, but but uh, the frequency of guys in the tech world, which my ex-husband is mm -hmm. in the tech world, they they find each other. And I think that, you know, the thing is they they got it got um, uh, things started you know, cresting, right, in the 1990s, coincidentally, with people getting home computers and having the internet and ways to secretly connect with other guys like themselves. And sex right? offenders, by and large, are very tech savvy. 
ah, there you go. Number three, did he select a therapist? Did that therapist or he claim the marriage is now a lesbian relationship? 13 of us. Yes. (laughs) Okay. Number four, I'm just going to go on. (laughs) Number four, did he put money in a secret account or other venue and spend it on wardrobe, makeup, electrolysis, et cetera? Did he incur or did he incur credit card debt? There's all kind of secret ways now to have things delivered to a different location and all this kind of thing. So I've got uh, 20. So that's that's over a third. And I I would have thought that would have been higher. So when I think some of the criticize you that you've cherry picked information right right there and there. Yeah, I thought you were going to I thought you were going to say 100 percent. The women are so honest. They say, well, he might have done that, but I don't know. So I I think they're still giving them benefit of the doubt. So I think all these guys were deceptive. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Because they, you know, like there's just too many of us who. Yeah. Well, that that speaks well of the validity of this study, because right, if it was going to be biased, you'd have 100 percent. Right. And I'm like, uh, there are a couple of them. Then they 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 hedge these these women are just being so honest. And yeah. then they had, well, there was this and this, but I don't really know if I can count that. And I'm like, I'll count that. Yes. that's <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, and uh, did he wear your clothing or makeup? 19. Yes. So that's over. See, I thought that would have still been higher. So the question is, where well, is he getting but, uh, My yeah. contention and, is he ain't buying it. I think a lot of these but, guys are stealing it. Right. And the thing is, um, then sometimes the, she says, well, he couldn't have because I'm five, two and 110 pounds and he was six, two and, you know, 190 pounds. And so he could, you know, I didn't find my stuff wrecked and, and, and stretched out. <laughs> so, okay. so sometimes it's physically not possible. That makes sense. <laughs> he had to go to the plus size female clothing store. Anyway. Uh, number six, uh, did he suggest or coerce or cajole you into sex role play whereby you are to use a strap on or other sex toy and play the male part in bed? 15, yes. Now, um, the answer would be higher. Uh, that's why I said suggest, coerce, or cajole. And um, the thing is, it was suggested to me. So I'm one of those yeses. I didn't do it. I said, no, you know, and, um, and then uh, s- number seven, did a therapist suggest any of the above as in <laughs> number six, five, <laughs> five of the therapists are the ones who are presenting as I, we went through what Ruth, the charlatan had, you know, open this door, that door and try this and try that. Yeah, so Haven't much for values well. neutral. These therapists yeah, right. are not values neutral. <laughs> no, no. She told me that I'm spunky and traditional. <laughs> That's and I'm like, fine, I'll take it. <laughs> uh eight. Uh did he defame or vilify you, you know, in documents in court or on social media? Um uh or you know, to your friend group and stuff like this. 25. 25 of us, yes. There's the slandering. Yeah. And and the thing is, uh, unfortunately, with the, um, you know, the context of our progressive values, <laughs> our no ethics <laughs> uh, uh, mindset that we have now uh, in the West, um, you know, then you're not supposed to tell, you know, like the friend, the friends, <laughs> your friends don't want to know the truth about what he's been doing. They don't want to know because they want to believe that this person is so tortured and oppressed and, and uh, you know, that, that they would be masochistic on their own body, right? So, okay. Did he claim to any therapist or a group of friends or anybody, relatives, whatever, that you abused him? verbally or physically because these people are saying words are violence so they're 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 the ones who are violent but they're saying words are violence so seven of us said yes so for some women uh they didn't know and it's probably happening you know uh 
Number 10, did he attack you physically? 15, including Tracy Shannon, he had thrown her down the stairs. And and uh, only and there were three choking incidents of these, and um, only two were reported to police. That's how. And then this all, last one <clears throat> that I was so discussing. away with so much of this. There's yes. no police reports. And, and it's found. it's just yeah. And then uh, there's this one case in the UK where she did report it. Uh, a strangulation, actually. Uh, I shouldn't say three choking, three attempted strangulations, because yeah. that's strangulation. Okay. And two of the, actually three of them, I have to add that, three three of the choking incidents, all three of the choking incidents, uh, the strangulation incidents were reported to police. Um, it helped It helped in, you know, uh, establishing who gets custody of the kids. It happens that in all three of those cases, um, there were children. So that's the thing is like, um, these guys are getting carte blanche to be violent. And often when there are children in the home, the children are witnessing this, which is a kind of abuse of children, right? To see that violence, even if they're not doing it. it, it it's uh, creating trauma. Yeah. Um, did he force unwanted sex? And that's that's different than coerce cajole suggest, okay? Where the woman is tr saying, okay, you know, all right, if, if it makes you happy, I'll just da da da. Um, and um, so, yeah, 19, 19 sexual assault. Mm -hmm. So 53 men, 19 of them committed some version of spousal rape on their wife. Uh, okay, then I have this question about members of the clergy, because uh, sometimes... Uh, the the religion has gotten captured. I mean, you would think <laughs> that the priests and the rabbis and stuff would, um, you know, be supporting the wife. But and in this case, a lot of times they said, you know, we weren't religious. I didn't have any contact with the clergy. But in four cases, the clergy was going along with this. And in one case, I had this rabbi saying to me, you know, calling my ex husband she. I was like, don't call him she. You know, you, you've you read Leviticus, you know the Bible, you know, don't do that, please. Not to me, it's insulting. But uh, yeah, so um, that's that's just to demonstrate basically the, the capture, you know, the societal capture, the indoctrination, you know, the brainwashing. Did anyone <laughs> suggest that you are now obligated to share Mother's Day? Three of us, yes. Um, I have a feeling and, that because the, the we are the are, women. The kids are so messed up. Yeah. My kids are messed up. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. And the thing is, um, so uh, I added this to it um, because I said, did teachers prompt the child or children to start making two Mother's Day gifts? And I know that that oh, I gotta, it, my see, son's the trauma. The whole narrative. <laughs> No one is, no one is, <clears throat> you know, I, I want Blanchard, Zuckard, ba Bailey, and Cantor to, to recognize that this is, um, you know, kind of a, a, a psychological assault on motherhood. Of course it is. Yeah. As well as look at these kids. Right. We're, right. We, we're so concerned about deviant men's feelings. Yeah. What I have to say is I ain't worried about a bunch of deviant men who have been unfaithful and screwed their wives over in multiple different kinds of ways. Yeah. Now they've left tragedy in their wake. And, oh, we're still going to worry about these deviant men. They're making choices that have negatively and impacted we're gonna all let these the... people. <laughs> and we're gonna now let... these kids, you're telling kids, oh, <laughs> suddenly you have two mommies. <laughs> And you think yes. that kid's ever going to be psychologically yes. normal again? And I, yes. And I honestly believe that my grown sons now who are in their middle 30s, I believe they are looking back and creating their own false narrative of the past, just like their father creates a false narrative they, they of his past. They and to. they, yes. And they are blaming me. Or not what I was supposed to do. I was supposed to say, yes, we're we're like two mommies. Yeah. You know, and I knew that if I tried to stay, 
like my father came to me when this was happening and he said, look, if you, if you are trying to keep your family together, we will accept you as two women. I want you to think that we are, we are, I don't want you to think that, that we, we would reject you or something. And I said, dad, I, I just am a heterosexual. We don't have to go into the details. Okay, dad. <laughs> but I know how I was conceived. <laughs> the extent, everybody's <laughs> affected by this guy's selfish choice. Yes, the yes. Kids, uh, the marriage, the kids, extended family. I just, I mean, that speaks to what yeah. a wonderful man my father was. Yeah, you know. Yeah, bless yeah. his heart. <laughs> bless his heart. He's smiling down on us from heaven. Yeah. You know. Um, did you lose a set of friends? Uh, Twenty-two. Yes, but but uh, actually, that you know, again, <clears throat> uh, many of us have to walk away from that those affirming that set of friends because they are participating in a lie so so uh basically like this did you lose a set of friends it's sort of like it's uh women are interpreting that as did friends dump you right as opposed to you uh you know walking away because they're not supportive right and um uh so again, I think that it, my number of it represents um, it's under it's undercount it's an undercount. Um, uh, and and the thing is, I I specifically did not say questions like, "Did you feel isolated?" Of course, that's that's a given. Of course, you feel isolated, you know. And so, uh, I I'm I didn't like. It's not questions about did you feel something, something. And that's interesting because all of the research by those uh, sexologists and stuff, it's all about feelings. It's not about did you experience this? Did this happen to you? Did that happen to you? What did you do? Did you do this? Did you do that? What are you watching? Right? They're, they're, not, they're not really talking about behavior. They're talking feelings about feelings are not very me feelings. measurable and, and observable. So <laughs> right. for being scientific, it's interesting to focus <laughs> no. on feelings. Right. And the whole thing about the suicidal ideation, you know, is, um, you know, they are conflating suicidal ideation with serious suicide attempts. Correct. Because it's it's really not uh, from what I have gathered in the extensive uh, observation and seeking out information that I have done, um, the serious suicide attempts actually are much higher in those who had those surgeries and then seven years later regret. That's quite high. In the, in the Swedish study, uh, 2011, of uh, post-op, uh, people years later who who had died of the death the transitioning record. actual surgical transitioning regret increases the likelihood a yes. number of years later yeah by and, 40 percent i think the study yeah, showed because uh because basically it's it's um you know for the ones who i mean maybe they're not there are those who i think are just um they become celibate because it's not going to work they thought that they were going to find a heterosexual man right that's what my uh ex-husband wrote in his diaries that he was going to the gay center of the universe to do his cross dressing which blanchard calls the true life test and sitting there in a gay bar you know because that's where it's safe for him because if he went to a trucker bar in queens they would kick him out i guess or something <laughs> and so and so that that would be the true life test to see if you could pass <laughs> as a female um so uh and the thing is you know uh, cross dressing is one of the gay behaviors one of the like a high percentage i think a, a, a surprising percentage of gay men will go out cross dressing and i think they're working on their mommy issues that's how i see it <laughs> I still i still find it insulting I, I find drag and all of that just simply insulting for women you know 
and um and it's it's and again they they are saying that they're exploring their feminine feelings and the thing is okay if you want to explore your feminine feelings then have some kind of a machine not an electric dildo or whatever have some kind of a machine <laughs> to simulate labor and birth okay <laughs> And like right, you, you know, the Woody Allen woman. film, so you know the the Woody Allen film where he steps into a yeah. tube and it's the yeah. orgasmatron, you know, and it's like, uh, you know. But so okay, you know, step into it. You want the most female experience of all. You step into it and you feel contraction, and you feel the head of a baby <laughs> passing through your vagina, the birth canal. <laughs> like I feel like let's not call it the vagina anymore. Even if you didn't have any babies or ever get pregnant or whatever, call it the birth canal. Let's just call it the birth canal. And then, uh, so this, you know, Dr. Marcy Bowers, <laughs> this famous surgeon, right? Like, you can't promise <laughs> you can give a male body a birth canal. Okay? Right. And, Not and possible. He, you know, he's the deviant guy that's cross-dressed, and he's the head of WPATH now, and he's the one that uh, oversaw the botched surgery of Jazz Jennings. Yes, right. And and he is still legally married to the mother of his three children, Anne, who lives in, uh, like, they don't live together. And, oh, Mark. Oh, and he's, he's uh, almost about the same age as me. <clears throat> we were, we certainly passed by each other <laughs> in, in the building that I can't remember, Science Hall or something like this where I took anatomy as a dancer <laughs> and uh, and uh, he was like in, in uh, doing a biochem uh, degree at the University of Wisconsin-Madison <laughs> at the same time, 1970s, US as me. Didn't know him. Didn't yeah. know him. But <clears throat> he's like from Racine or something, right? So, and then so, it, it, but it's often like they need to do that research. I'm not, you know, a lot of times it's often when the wife is postpartum from whatever the last baby, is, you know, the third um, and stuff. And so and this, you know, like I, I very much appreciate that your stance, you know, as a religious observant Christian, I appreciate your stance that in some cases you just have to get divorced. You can't you can't, you know. Uh, well, it's infidelity, comedy. right? It's if if a guy's not repentant, you know, if he's it's, not sorry, like, you know, and 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 the thing is, we have the desire to forget terrible things that happened to us. Right. And so I remember when I saw uh, this was uh, in in Tracy Shannon's interview with uh, uh, Michael Knowles, <clears throat> which he didn't dare to put on his YouTube channel. Like he just put it on his other thing, and I I got it. I got it from someone else. I, I don't even know how, how I watched it. It was a really great interview. She she said that she had forgotten and her one of her children reminded her that he had thrown her down the stair before it ended. You know, and, and so and the thing is you're you're kind of stuck because you want to call the police and report this violent thing that, you know, this this is a criminal. He just did a physical violent crime. But he's also the breadwinner of your family. And so you're like, that's every abused woman has this, you know, dilemma if he's the, the one holding the job, you know. So, uh, well, so we've got, to, um, okay. let's uh, choose I've some of the, okay, let's do it. I was going to say, we've got a couple quick. minutes left. Let's, okay. let's finish up. Uh, did he start <laughs> self-identifying as mother of the children that he fathered or was stepfather of? There was a stepfather. 10 yes <laughs> so that's you know 20 almost 20 percent um did he suggest or insist that the children call him mama something okay 11 hmm. oh plus one there's one that's a grandfather <clears throat> okay <laughs> oh this was from a troll that's i put up i just put plus on this because i i don't know anything about his ex-wife but but he was a troll who came onto my channel and said, well, I never insisted on my children calling me mother anything. Oh, but he actually. He old <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, he's defending himself that he never did that. But then he says, 
but I'm best friends with my 16 year old granddaughter. I'm like, oh God, you know, please. I don't want to know. I'm sorry. I took the Lord's name in vain. Excuse me. But wow. Nana okay. We've got so serious issues. doesn't call him. The granddaughter doesn't call him granddad, even though she knows biologically he is her grandfather. And he says that he is best friends with his 16 year old. There's serious. That raises serious red flags for and, my and years. I, yeah. Yeah, I know. And the thing is, I was like, I just had to block him from the channel because I'm yeah, not going to interact with these guys because then they'll report my channel and they'll get their friends to report my channel That's and right. then we'll be banned. That's so, right. OK. <laughs> uh, 19, did a therapist or any relatives tell you that your rejection of him and your ending the relationship caused him to decide to live full time as a female? Six of us. Then he blames it on us. You know, he would have hobbled along doing part time cross dressing, he says. Right. If we had just played that role and pretended this and did that in bed and, you know, <laughs> crushed our own psyche, right? So six of them are, and who knows what, you know, like who knows how many of them, right, are saying this and, and we didn't hear it. Like he's not. Uh, saying it on social media or something where you know about it. I mean, you know, my my ex-husband stated this in court documents. <laughs> and so did his diagnosing sexologist, psychologist, Dr. Connie. She said that it was my rejection of him after, you know, in the six page affidavit, which I have to pay my attorney to read and answer and all this stuff. She she says in the first two pages, she says how it's, oh, it's from birth and it's this thing that we've known historically, you know, and Da, 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 da. This is in the 1990s. She's making all these claims about transsexuals and how it's this anomaly, this you know mismatch between the brain and the body, and we know this, and it's da da da, and it's a thing. But, but it's Uta's decision to get divorced and serve in papers that caused him to have to go over to Stanford University Medical School in 1996 and have the operation. Now, if, when I read between the lines. I'm saying that is regret right there. That's regret. If you're saying someone else caused you, you know, to to do well, this. It's both. It's blame shifting and there may be some regret. I, but it, I it's, mean, because if, if you had no regret, you would say it was my decision. I take ownership of this. Well, well they so, get mileage out of playing the victim. That's a, right. I mean, how, how many of the uh, sex offenders that I deal with, not that everybody yeah. who cross dresses is a sex offender, but it's a common theme, right? Because they're going right. to flip the script. I mean, Bill Clinton, you listen to him and he's the victim. Right. Right. Yeah. Right wing well, conspiracy. I, I mean, it does, that one. it does speak. I mean, I think Bill Clinton didn't have a good father or something like that, right? Yeah, like, but it's still, just, it look at how he's manipulated right. all those. But I, I do want to say that I, I think it's, I think it, it is so important to tell boys that they're going to grow up to be men, <laughs> and that if they become a father, they have to be there for that kid. Something right? about commitment and responsibility. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. You know, Number twenty. A, this, my last oh, okay. one. Okay. Do we have one more? Okay. Let's yeah. go. Let's and go. did he co-opt your experience of childbirth using the details of your labor? to convince his new friends of his female status. Four of us, we know that he did this, including my ex-husband. Because, I know, because he told, I, I taught someone who lived, the children of a neighbor of his from his same building. Her children coincidentally went to the first school in New York, in Brooklyn that I worked at in my, you know, pre-K job. And uh, actually, it was when I was teaching. Uh, I did three years of early grade science. Um, and uh, so I actually taught both of her children. It was one of those cases where they, they had fertility problems, so they adopted a kid, and then she got pregnant. So they have these kids that are nine months apart or something like this in age. So I taught the kindergartner and the first grader in science. And, and um, my children happen to have unusual names that are from their great-grandfathers. And... Um, and I just somehow mentioned, oh, you know, something about how her children were so brilliant and and um, just asking very sweet, intuitive questions. And I said, it reminds me of my da 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 and said my kids names. And she said, oh, that's funny. I know two kids who have two boys who have those names, but you're not their mother. And I was like, do they have red hair? 
because I am their mother. <laughs> and let me look. And then I look on the thing. Oh, I see you live on that same street. Oh, yeah. Okay. You're, you're the upstairs neighbor of my ex-husband. Just by coincidence, like, you know, every big city is a small town. So, so he's, he's and, laying and claim he, to being their mother. she kind of alluded to, but he, you know, I was like, I wanted to tell her, you need to get your eyes checked if you really think that this guy is a woman. <laughs> but uh, apparently he had said, you know, like how long the labors were, you know, the first one, 12 hours, the second one, five hours, very intense. Uh, and it shows you how, and, how yeah. deceptive, how these guys I, can spin a good yarn, be so yeah. believable. That's how deceptive. These guys are, oh, you right. know, this is ready to make my yeah. eyes bleed. So, and and so four, four of us, are, we know that that he did this. And then the one who was really violent uh, that I spoke about, <clears throat> where the police are not um, prosecuting, you know, it, he, they told this young woman in the UK that, that she had, that she didn't have enough evidence to charge him. And, and there was bruising on her neck from the strangulation attempt. And, um, and... There was, uh, you know, fluid evidence of the rape. And um, so how is that not enough evidence, right? And um, uh, and he, she found his cache of uh, her clothing. He was, you know, he, he's one of the ones who was using her clothing. And he was, and... Um, he was masturbating using the uh, some kind of nursing nightgown, you know, that had the place where you can take out your breast for breastfeeding and stuff like that. So he had he had taken that, and um, and shortly after the baby was born, you know, like she had this proof of that you could find semen on you know this this clothing, and it's there's a I think I believe actually that these guys are so sick that they believe that childbirth is a sexual experience for a woman. Well, and that's how they, that's how warped they are. Right? Yeah. And, and, oh, gosh, we, we need more time. But we're going to have <laughs> well, to have you well, back, right? Okay. Because we're going to, again, encourage women who, wives, ex-wives who've been betrayed by sexually deviant men, those men who started dressing in women's underwear and, and drag got into porn. Yeah. So that's right. who these guys are. They claim to be trans and other things. Uh -huh. So uh, go online, take your assessment, pass it uh -huh. along to others. So that's the yeah. criteria that they have yes. to also have left home. I mean, yeah. you left the guy. Mm -hmm. And yes. we'll have you back because you are, you're doing one of a kind research that is mm -hmm. necessary to combat right. and to combat this false narrative that's being sown out right. there. Yes. And, and there is a documentary upcoming called Behind the Looking Glass. There's a trailer for it on a YouTube channel called Lime Soda Films. That's Vaishnavi Sundar. And she has been talking about how the trans uh, culture is, uh, in her view, going to sweep across the global south. Right. Yeah. And if it's, we don't it's, stop it, there's it's all not these, stopped. There's all these um, strange... Uh, in, routes through, for example, the caste system. Like there are some high caste men from the high caste, the, I guess Brahmin, whatever it is, in India who are probably gay, right? And, but they kind of want to claim that they have low caste oppression points. And so they're saying that they're trans. Because this, this whole thing, yeah. it's unbelievable. Yeah. But we're going to have to have you back, Uda. Yeah. Okay. You are, you're a wealth of knowledge. I, mm -hmm. I repeat yeah, it time and out. time again, and it is true. You've earned it the hard way. So thank yes. you so yes. much. And we'll yes. have you back, and we'll pick up at this point next yes. time. Yes. Okay. So you're doing great work. Thank you. Brad, you too. We couldn't do this without you. Thank you so much. And again, we look forward to having Uda back. Thank you.